just want everybody to know, to you, I forgive you. You took something very precious away from me. I would never talk to her ever again. I would never be able to hold her again. But I forgive you. And have mercy on your soul. You hurt me. You hurt a lot of people. But God forgive you. And I forgive you. God forgives you and I forgive you. That uh, was families of those killed in the Charleston church shooting, giving the shooter in the nation a lesson in the healing power of forgiveness and grace. It was a remarkable moment. Let's bring in right now the founding pastor of Redeemer Presbyterian Church in New York City, New York Times bestselling author, Tim Keller. His latest book is titled, Forgive, Why Should I and How Can I? Tim, it is just so great to see you. Thank you so much. Um, talk about, uh, Jesus talks, obviously, about forgiving uh, those who uh, would do us harm, uh, for those who persecute us. Talk about why it's so important for us to forgive. Well, you really can't have a relationship without forgiveness. You can't have a marriage. You can't have a friendship. Um, and you really can't even have a society. Uh, Desmond Tutu, you know, wrote a book called With No Future Without Forgiveness. And he was basically saying that you have endless cycles of retaliation between various classes and groups. Uh, it goes on for centuries unless you learn to forgive. So uh, I'm not sure we can have a human community without forgiveness. You know, um, it, it raises a question of how do you do it uh, without allowing people to continue to walk over you? I, right. I, I think about how Jesus uses the word meek. And for Jesus, meek does not mean weak. It's actually a strength. Yes. You actually talk about balancing these things. How do you save your humanity while forgiving others? Well, first of all, <clears throat> forgiveness is not the opposite of doing justice. You can do them both. So, for example, um, in fact, I would go so far as to say, unless you forgive the person that's wronged you, you actually won't seek justice. You'll actually seek vengeance, and they're not the same thing. Vengeance always goes beyond justice. It, it overshoots. Vengeance is also consuming you in hate. And if I forgive on the inside and then go pursue justice and, and, and seek to make sure that for— um, uh, for the sake of justice, for the sake of the human community, for the sake of future victims, I'm pursuing justice. That means I'm doing it for others' sake and for justice's sake, but vengeance is just done for my sake. I just want that person to suffer. And so in order to forgive, I basically have to say, I am not going to take vengeance. And I'm not going to keep bringing it up to myself over and over again, so I'm consumed by it. But uh, forgiveness yeah. is granted before it's felt. Yeah. So, so you talk about forgiveness being an essential skill, um, and you were you were just talking about uh, about some of the ways to do it for those who are having a hard time that are watching right now, and we're going into Thanksgiving. Sometimes Thanksgiving dinners can be difficult to, for some family members. Maybe there's a family member who really hurt somebody who is watching right now. What are some basic steps? What's the first step to forgiveness? Do you do you think? Uh, Miroslav Volf, some years ago, he's a Yale theologian, wrote a book called Exclusion and Embrace. Uh, and he was actually, he's Croatian. He was talking about how do you deal with, well, at the time, the uh, all the atrocities in the Balkans. But he has a great line. He says, forgiveness flounders when I exclude the enemy from the community of humans, and I exclude myself from the community of sinners. And what he's saying is, first of all, Remember that you need forgiveness. You do not live up to your ideals. You've got to remember that first, because unless you realize you live by forgiveness. Looks like looks like we lost Tim, uh, but but we'll 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 be trying to reconnect with him. Uh, Rev, that is so important. Uh, what, what, what Tim was talking about, we can forgive others when we realize that we ourselves are sinners. And that's when Jesus said, blessed are the merciful, for they shall be shown mercy. And Jesus says, the measure by which you, you, by how you measure others, that measure will be used against you by God. So if you forgive others, God will forgive you.
And it's the most powerful way to really tell yourself who you are. You know, I, 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 I've I said to you in private, but I'll say it publicly, uh, when I was leading some marches in Bensonhurst, Brooklyn, a young black uh, teenager was killed by a white mob in 1991. Uh, and the mob, white uh, neighbors would come out and call us the N-word and throw things at us for marching for justice. One Saturday, one of the marches, uh, a white guy named Michael, I won't give his last name, stabbed me. And I uh, went to court after he was indicted and, and, and prosecuted. I went to court and forgave him. And I later visited him in jail. And I never will forget, he looked at me and he says, I don't believe you came to see me and I tried to kill you. Luckily, it wasn't a, a, a wound that was that bad, though I still have the surgical scar look at every morning. And I told him, I didn't come to see you to forgive you for you. I came to forgive you to know who I am, to know that I can really practice what I preach. And that's when I started growing with Mrs. King's conversations and stuff I shared with you. I think forgiveness gives you a mirror into who you are more than it does for anybody else. That's well said. We've got Pastor Tim Keller back with us now. Tim, uh, there are certainly scales of this. We came into the segment with just that extraordinary, chill-inducing moment of the families of in Charleston forgiving the man who had slaughtered a group of people as they were at a prayer meeting at that AME church in Charleston. And then there are the small everyday acts of forgiveness. You have a fight with somebody. Somebody says something that they, maybe they regret. Sometimes those can be hard, too. So how do you push your pride to the side sometimes and say, I forgive you, let's move on. I, I believe you can do it at, you might say, the secular level. Uh, and the secular level is, I need forgiveness myself. And I also care about the human community. And therefore, I'm going to forgive for the, for the sake of other people. And I'm going to do it because I actually I owe it to others since I need to be forgiven too. I do think, though, that the African-American people who were forgiving uh, that the shooter were Christians. And what they do every single Sunday is they take into the center of their heart through singing and through worship and through preaching, the, uh, a man who died for his enemies, a man who died saying, Father, forgive them. And see, if you have that in the center of your life, then you've got a resource that is like no other. As we go into Thanksgiving, uh, Tim, uh, what are you thankful for? What should we be thankful for? <laughs> Well, as you know, almost three years ago, I was, uh, they spotted my stage four pancreatic cancer, cancer. And it's almost three years. Grateful. I'm grateful to God that I'm still here. I'm grateful to the doctors at New York Presbyterian, but especially grateful to a great set of doctors down at the National Institutes for Health in Bethesda, Maryland, under Steve Rosenberg. And I'm very grateful to all of them. And my, my thanks goes out to all those parties right now. All right, Tim Keller, thank you. It's great having you here. The book is Forgive, Why Should I and How Can I? Please come back very soon. Thank you so much. Happy Thanksgiving.